Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstorm cast, this side of East Yorkshire. And today we've got a 1 versus 1 on Meeting of Minds. Over in the Ox side, we've got El Amont. There's over in the Tau side, we've got Death Gun. Death Gun going to go for double Stealth Suit Teams, Earthcast Builder, and a Tau Barracks. Whereas the Orcs are going to go for triple Slugger Boys, Generator, and a Boys Hut. So now that we had double Tau last night, but... I'm just, I'm just feeling the Tau. We don't see enough Tau on this channel. I think they're one of the least played races in the game, so it's always nice to see when they're out and about. It's such a fabulous colour scheme as well. Like a Thousand Suns-esque thing going on. Tau Commander on the way out. I imagine there we go. Big, big Mech as well for the Orcs. Orcs do struggle against Tau, I would say, in the map control in the early game, purely because their stealth suit detection, well, their infiltration detection isn't amazing. Do they... Is that, uh, who's that guy? He's from, um, is it Game of Thrones? Is he Jamie Lannister? I think. Maybe, I don't know. Either way, Jamie Lannister, Golden Hand, likes his sister a little bit too much. No judgment though, I mean, if, 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 if you do what makes you happy, so long as it doesn't involve me. That's what I always say. Tower Commander on his way out, everyone just capturing their bits and bobs, their nearest and dearest, so to speak. Big Mech is out. And yeah, I do believe that the Orcs gone for the triple sluggers, just trying to get their economy up as quickly as humanly possible, as Meeting of Minds is famous for the big epic battles where you've got loads of choices for popping down listing purse. No one going for the relic super oh, he says that. Jamie Lannister rising above the golden arches of the relic. Tower Commander over here, firing away the slugger boys. These guys are just coming around just to see what the Tau are up to. We'll be able to... I well, imagine we might be able to do some decapping, although sadly, this listing person has already been popped on. Very well done by Death Gun over here. These Orcs, yeah, they're just gonna... They're just gonna probably... either die or... or run away. But by the looks of it, looks like they're trying to... suicide themselves into the face of these Earthcast Builders. Well, the Tau Commander. Well, I mind you, in saying that, once the squad goes down, they will be able to have more squad cap up for some shooter boys. If that is what they want to do. No war banners going on at the moment, though. The Orcs are actually being reinforced. These guys are, are being used for reasons. Probably trying to waste the ammunition of the Tau Commander. Tau Fire Warriors on the field now as well. Yeah, these guys are going to be brown bread quick as you like. Full squad wipe on the way. It does go down. Very unfortunate. I'd managed to kill a Earthcast Builder, though, so that is something. Don't bother me. Big Mech I'm now in a bit of a sticky situation. Big Mech versus Tau Commander. The Big Mech will usually lose in a 1v1, mainly because Tau Commander can throw down snares, prevent the Big Mech from getting in close combat. He can also then just jump away as well once that snare wears off. So without Shooter Boy support, this Big Mech is going to be having a big sad against the Tau Commander. 97 to 20. Compared to 86 and 10, so the Orcs have certainly gone for their tier, well, their, their economy at the moment. Stealth Burst Cannon Enhancements will help the Stealth Suits from, well, what well, well, should I say, will help them deal with these Slugger Boys. As Jamie Lannister falls for the Orcish Menace. Slugger Boys, though, kind of been thrown away in this match so far. Alamont being very casual with his Slugger Boys. But I suppose he has the blue money to throw away at this stage of the game. With his economic advancements. No tier 2. Oh, imagine this one's gone for tier 2. And I'm going to have a go for War Banner as well over here. Well, add to the defensive capabilities. Prosper as Tau do struggle playing very aggressive in the early game without the Vespids. Vespids are the ones that you would jump in to bash any, any buildings. But they haven't gone for them at the moment. Point us at our targets. But Big Mech needs to teleport away. Don't try and deny the Tau this relic. Knocking this self-suit member up while giving these guys the old backhand, but they have managed to capture this relic in the middle. So the Big Mac will teleport away. Very, very low on health at the moment. Self-suit's been denied the critical location in the middle. Got a pile of guns coming out over here for the Big Mac. Oh, should I say the art player? As the self-suits and the Tau Commander continue firing along. Big Mech has gone down. Slugger Boy being 
destroyed as well. Well, not destroyed, killed would be the more accurate term, wouldn't it? And the Tower Commander does have the ability to outrange this listening post, so... Definitely not what the Orc player wants. Being fired into his uh, his listening post. War Banner will go up, and what tech are they on at the moment? On the way for Tier 2. Big Mech is going to be replaced. I mean, the Tower player, if, if he knew, he would just be able to be, play as aggressively as he wanted. Because the Orc player doesn't have anything to push away anything at the moment. Path of Enlightenment for the Tau, so Tier 2 on the way. Going for some heavy boy armor research. As the self-suit team is going within range of this war banner. But yeah, these Grots watching the Tau commander over the ridge as the Big Mech finishes. I'm going to... Ah, there we go. Double Storm Boys. We'll certainly be able to kick the Fire Warrior teams in the head Quite considerably, should they get into close combat. Over here, we do have some Slugger Boys defending this critical location from the... Well, at least attempting to defend this critical location from the Stealth Suit teams. Though they're not being all that successful. Like we said, Orcs do really, really struggle with self-detection early in the game. Or even in the mid-game, to be honest. It's their trap being popped down in a defensive manner. Vehicle beacon and a plasma grenade. Plasma grenade? Plasma generator. Been gone down there. Custom gadgets research on the way as well. War banner. So after this one's done, they will be ready to get their vehicles out. Knob arm of a power claw. Grasping at thin air there. Not entirely sure what their business is other than... Ah, oh, I suppose that if they stay here... Then uh, the critical location can't be captured by the stealth suits because the Orcs would be able to see them. But it's double stealth suit teams, and they have gone for their upgrades, so they do pack a mean punch on the range game. 1925, not the most amazing damage, but still, when you've got no recourse, will be able to win eventually. Stormboy's now moving around, having a sniff at this relic. XV25, ready for action. Stealth suit teams that. Will fall back in defensive manner. The Orcs decide to capture that critical location on the top side instead. Orcs will have all control of all four, all three, sorry, all three critical locations by the end of this. I will apologise if my words aren't coming out all that correctly. Just came back from a holiday in Amsterdam where we saw loads and loads of museums. Definitely didn't do anything drug related or. Stripper related. It was purely culture, purely museums. And I saw so many museums. I'm just a little bit off my head at the moment. Not entirely. I mean, I'm totally, totally sober now, but you know, after a whole night of museums and culture, the brain doesn't quite work the same as it did the day before. We're no major aggressive players going on at the moment. Although, mind you, this Devilfish Troop Carrier is going to slow but surely snake its way. Across, firing away, deploying double fire warrior teams, and these slugger boys are not going to pack the punch necessary to defend themselves. We have some knobs on the field, and stone boys, so very melee focused. Also, have a mega armored knob as well on auto punishment. And the orcs do have, yeah, 200, 128 and 40 compared to 116 and 50. The orcs do have. Quite a decent amount of economy to play with. So they're just playing nice and slow at the moment. Mega armor knob. Reinforced with another guy. Gonna use their zappy bits to get as close as possible. Stair chop gonna slow down the Storm Boys, but then again, ball the knobs and the green tide moving forward. Zapper going on the Devilfish troop carrier, which will slow it down to a halt. Storm Boys over here. Being spotted by the Pathfinder teams. And also been shot at as well. More Devilfish troop carries as well. The Orcs don't mind. They are ploughing on into the south side of the tower base. Got some upgrades on these listing posts. Got some more fire warriors as well. Very impressive range. We'll be able to cover the retreat of these fire teams as more come from the northern side. Troop carrier moving forward as well as these knobs once again activate their sparky bits to increase their movement speed. 
Six minutes. We'll decide to bash up this listing post, and they will absolutely rip and tear it. No dramas whatsoever. Do have another troop carrier on the way. And the orcs are not relenting. Stormboy's jumping over, gonna try and tie up these fire warriors, but will be instantly wiped out. Meganob's deciding to fulfill that role instead. Using their additional speed to get surround on the Tau Commander. Ripping him a new leg. Listing post over here gonna go down as well. The big economic damage to the Tau from this push by the Orc player. Losing two upgraded listing posts. Currently going back down to 98. The well, troop carries are being used to some effect. Keeping their regular lads away from combat. Moving them around. It's hard to do that kind of strategy with Devilfish troop carries as they are not particularly fast troop carries. They are slow and cumbersome. Use their infiltration to their best advantage, but with these Mega Armor knobs around, their stealth stuff isn't going to do them all that much. Tower Commander, armed with his Flamer and Missile Launcher, will fire away. We do have some Tank Busters. There's probably one the Orc player wants to help him deal with these Delphish Troop Carriers quickly. But all the knobs have died. Bit of a waste there. So while this is going on, what is the Orc player cooking up? More Storm Boys. More Mega Armor knobs. They've gone down as well. Got some Slugger Boys over here as well and Tank Busters. Bit of a mixed match of units. As the Tau move back into an offensive stance. Four minutes until taken victory. Using their line of sight to fire out these Slugger Boys from a safe distance. Stone Boys over here with a knob armed with a power claw. Going to just transfer themselves straight into the Tau base. But the Lissy Pass has already been upgraded and no matter where they go... There will be something shooting at them. We'll do their best against this listening post, and they will, they will get it down if the knob stays alive. Cal not reacting to it too much, though. Don't want to take their eyes off the center ground. Knobs back on. Both the mega armored and the regular knobs combined. Has the big mech been replaced? No, the big mech is not online at the moment. Going to move forward, trying to capture this Delphish troop carrier. Which, like we say, it's not the fastest, but it is still a little bit faster than walking speed. And this is a lot of tower fire to contend with. Ox will need something in the way of either more Storm Boys to tie them all up, or their own shooter boys with big shooters to add to their, well, to add to like a supportive kind of fire as they move forward. The problem with melee units is that when they're moving towards the enemy, they're not dealing any damage. Whereas the ranged units are always dealing damage. Unless they're obviously in close combat. Got a Kai on command first. Pressing some Tau big toys to come out to play. Maybe a hammerhead gunship, possibly. Maybe some crisis battle suits, which would be quite nice to see. Would certainly aid in the annihilation of this heavy infantry. Probably won't see a broadside battle suit, as this is quite a melee focused composition from the Orc player. Orcs are now moving forward. We've got a snare trap in the middle there. Might potentially catch this Mega Armor Knob Squad. Big Mech teleporting in. Good to get a surround on this Devilfish Troop Carrier. Will take it down quick as you like. Two squads of knobs engaging as best they can. Tau Commander going to get smacked in the face with a big old chopper. That's good over here. Hornering this Delphi Shoot Carrier. But they decided before. Trying to see if they can get surround on this guy. Oh no, no, man, they turned back around. Firewise, get out of the tank just as the knobs get into close combat. And yeah, the firing line of the Tau has managed to be picked apart by the Orc player. Good use of attacking on multiple fronts. Good use of using multiple units as well. Easy to defend when you know that the enemy player is going to go for the same units all over again. Whereas double knobs, mega knobs, 
Slugger Boys and Storm Boys as well. That is a good combination. Party of five a day, I suppose, when you think about it. These Pathfinders in a very precarious situation do jump into the Delphish Troop Carrier. I assume it's going to turn around and drop him off somewhere far away. One Stormboy that was left there being taken down, so squad wiper over yonder. Nobs over here. Not sure what they want from life. Apart from dead Xenos. Oh, so they are Xenos themselves. Uh, dead Tau. Not entirely sure what the Orcs' relationship with Tau is. I imagine they're not too keen on them as they don't get involved in a proper scrap. You see some more troop carriers. Nothing major in tech-wise. Got a... Well, what, what was that? That was a improved metallurgy as well as a targeting optics. So more upgrades to make these Tau warriors stronger and whatnot. More capable of taking the damage. These knobs aren't going anywhere. They're just quite... They're just, they're just loving it. Many blue, squishy-faced Tau as they can possibly want to crush. So over here, they're using the cover to their advantage as they move forward towards the listening posts. Kion command post in the way of my coverage, dear oh dear. But yeah, it's, it's a slow, slow battle of attrition over yonder. And it seems that the Tau are coming out on top. I've got a big flirt at the moment, blue money. So could do more to get more units So I'm going to go for another Pathfinder team. Tau Commander very, very low on health. Will be supporting as far in the distance as he possibly can. Layers of fire from the Tau player. Let's go on the alt base. Tier 3, which is exciting. Star Boys will not see these Stealth Suit teams. Stealth Suits have not gone for their... Oh, man. They've got one fusion blaster, I guess. Orcs over here being punished by the stealth suit team, but will survive the decap, possibly even recapping. While this is going on, this listing post is slowly being whittled away. Again, if the stealth suits want to do any damage, they will have to get their fusion blasters. Stormboys over here trying to capture a critical location. While well, being fired at by stealth suit teams. I do like how the Tau player has managed to keep the uh, stealth suit teams relevant all the way through the game. Normally we see them at the beginning and they kind of like fade away as the Tau get bigger and better weapons. But they have been using them to quite good effect. Constantly harassing and harrying the Orcs Lack of infiltration. Now we're now going to start pushing into the more protected side of the base. He says before they turn around. You have an ethereal on the field. As a tower slow, but surely break down this listening post with infiltrated grots repairing it. Drone squad as well, just for good measure. Why not? Some flash kits for the orcs. Yeah, like I said, the orcs against this firing line will need a combination of. Fast moving melee units as well as a good strong ranged option to cover their advance. Lots of Tau on the field at the moment, actually. Not so much in the way of Orcs. I mean, the Orcs have got, well, the Tau have gone almost full squad cap for the infantry. Orcs not so much, kind of half at the moment. War boss on the way. Double flash gates. But yeah, the Tau not pressing their advantage. Or boss on the field. Also going to go for some more Mad Docs as well. And a Big Mech. The whole roster of Orc heroes. Or leaders or whatever you'd call them. Not heroes, are they? They're just lads, aren't they? Yeah, a combination of three lads. To beat back the Tau as this slur siege continues. Who's ready for surgery? Gonna go for more DACA re or even more DACA research. So these guys, I mean, look at that 158, so 227 range damage. And so long as they can see what's going on, they'll be certainly fine. 
Now we're going to see one squad almost taking out one model straight away. Got a big blue coming down. Going to screen the orcs a little bit. Well, it will keep them back for a little while. It's, it's a little bit of a waste, I would say. Want to wait for them to get involved into a big old combat before you use that ability. Mech shop being built up by the orcs. And as the time I've managed to kill this listing post, and I'm on the way to killing this war banner as well. Storm boys running forward with only two men left, one man left. That's it, at this stage of the game, the orcs cannot separate their squads all that much if they want to take on a big contingency of Tau. What is going on over here? Orcs are now engaged in close combat, do very, very little in close combat, my side. So if the Tau wanted to ameliorate this Orc menace, some close combat units would be quite useful. But then again, they are almost fully squad capped. 170 and 29. Compared to 150 and 57. All player also a big flat at the moment. War boss has gone. Well, not war boss. War banner has gone down. War boss almost dead there. Will die. Oh dear, we did. We had a big old burner bomb going on there. Doing significant damage to these towel. Well placed burner bomb. Can change the fate of the games. And the. Tau did lose a good chunk of their fighting force for that explosive over, the, over there. Flash gets now using their superior range capabilities. Double, double barracudas on the field there. Ideal against vehicle and aircraft, but they will certainly do a good job against knobs, slugger boys, anyone primarily focused on close combat. With these flash gates, not the safest of things. One barracuda has already gone down. Mega armor knob, really low on health at the moment. Only one left in his squad. Will go down sadly. Do a fire bomber for the orcs. And that range is just so impressive. Bang all the way from there. Managing to miss, but that's okay. Barracuda, once it sees it, will probably go fire bomber hunting. And to be honest, there we go. The orc has decided. He's seen too much. There's a lot of town nonsense going on and I mean what I mean we've got sky sky ray missile gunships yeah the orc composition wasn't ideal at the moment but he could have pushed a little bit harder in all honesty with those um uh, what they're called flash kits if he so chose and certainly the money to do it but anyway yeah man's minus land trap please uh do feel free to uh have a look at the old patreon one pound extra uh a week means like one 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 game a week and isn't that nice cool anyway I'll, I'll see you all in a bit peace